Hi, my name is Renee and I'm a sailor who also just happens to have some disabilities. So 12 months ago today, this girl who had a lifelong strong disliking to boats hopped on a yacht for the first time. How I got from there to here is the most amazing story and actually I still pinch myself when I think about the journey that I'm on. So. Join me in celebrating this really special anniversary by living some of the memories with me. <laughs> grew up being plagued by motion sickness. <laughs> Once I even threw up after my friend pushed me on her swing a little too wildly. Uh, so boats were never a fun thing. Even just the rocking of the manly ferry still docked at Circular Quay was enough to get my head spinning. Um, then over nine years ago um, I became an incomplete paraplegic and the task of rehabilitating back into normal life was at times challenging enough as it was. Um, so no way did the thought cross my mind to try using a form of transport that I never really liked anyway. Of course people who use wheelchairs could go on boats, but I had no need or desire to work out how I would. Well, <laughs> that all changed when I became friends with a very special family whose daily lives just happened to centre around boats. Uh, their home is water access only and the two teenage daughters who are like adopted sisters to me a mad keen talented and dedicated sailors in time i think i became captivated by their passion actually i don't really know how it happened honestly i don't think i was thinking at all um but i found myself on their motorboat and then Lauren, the eldest daughter, was patiently dropping hints over and over again that I should try sailing with this organisation who takes people with disabilities out. They're even based at the marina where she's a CYCA Youth Sailing Academy Advanced Squad member and offshore racer. So she could drive me there, show me around, meet the people with me, make sure I was okay. It took months of faithful prompting before I finally gave in to her and then before I knew it I found her pushing me up a ramp, not kicking and screaming I promise. Um, she's a great wheelchair helper. Um, but up a ramp and onto my first ever yacht. I'd go on to meet some great people, be hooked by the feeling of sailing in that very moment when David turned Kale bow down and I felt her begin gaining speed just by harnessing the power of the wind. <laughs> Line up. We're going to put the heady out, we're going to have a little sun, then we're going to see what it looks like. And if it's not appropriate, we're going to put a reef in the lane. Okay, so we're going to go out, grab a little bit of history for ourselves, see how the boat's sailing, see how you guys experience it, your full main, and then maybe we put a reef in and then see what the difference is between a full main and a, a reef. Okay? So why did I decide to become a volunteer for sailors with disabilities during that sail? Well, um, other than loving the sailing experience and somehow not becoming epically motion sick like I would have been previously, and uh, we think that has something to do with my sense of balance and motion being impaired by both my paralysis and a neurological condition. Uh, just basically the principles behind SWD were very much the same to what I had been used to when I was a volunteer and then disabled writer with the Writing for the Disabled Association. The idea that you take an activity that isn't generally made accessible to people with a disability and you make it open, adaptable and free of charge for them to try out. Interacting with people with disabilities was something I've always enjoyed and had a bit of 
a natural ability for. And then years ago, when I was struggling to understand how to change my mindset and live an adaptive focused life, I had a number of people more experienced in their journeys with their disabilities be my mentors, examples and encouragers. They were lifesavers and life changers, quite literally, for me. Um, and now I was at this place where I felt it was my time to pay it forward and become one of those positive examples and mentors for others. So being a volunteer crew member with SWD would allow me to do that. But I knew that in order for me to make this happen, I'd have to make some sacrifices. Um, I'd have to work out how to get a day off work every week. Um, I'd also have to break my severe work addiction <laughs> and me with no solo public transport experience would have to work out how to get in and out of the city to my home in the northwest. Um, I'd also have to believe David's words to me that even though my physical disabilities would still make me a useful crew member towards sailing the boat for the programs, my biggest value was actually because of my disabilities. Um, I'd have to believe that I was worthwhile, my contribution was worthwhile. Yeah. With no idea what I was doing, I just threw myself into SWD life when spring arrived and the next season of sailing programs began. I'm really thankful to the Thursday crew regulars. They welcomed me aboard and they taught me about sailing as we went along each week. And within a few weeks time, I just felt like I really belonged. Um, Skipper Mike, or Grumpy Mike, as he's also known, is really the coolest guy. He says it like it is, is up for giving me challenges, and I totally love sailing under him. Crewmates James and Jay, Ron, Ray, and Mark. We were the 2017 Summer Thursday regulars, and we were a pretty awesome bunch, I think. <laughs> I loved the Winds of Joy program. It was all that I had first hoped it would be. Um, I've had the privilege of meeting hundreds of special kids or adults with a disability or a disadvantage. Every sale was special. I am not exaggerating every sale. Whether it's the initially nervous ones who are soon sitting up on the bow or the ones who said they couldn't steer the boat, I soon see behind the helm with a grin on their face, the ones who find it hard to understand and follow instructions but then are able to follow my direction to either pull on the rope or let some of the rope out. The ones who arrive at the marina in a non-interactive state, but then light up and start making sounds or happy facial expressions when the boat starts moving a little faster and they feel the breeze. <laughs> My recounts of each sail have filled one whole journal so far and I'm part way through another. Uh, it's really cool to look back over. It's something that's so hard to describe. You can only experience for yourself. I don't know what happens out there. It's some sort of amazing magic, but cool things go on out there on the SWD yachts when we're out there sailing with some special people. <laughs> the summer sailing season also brought about the Wednesday Twilight Racing Series with the CYC. So I was getting my first taste of fun racing. I loved that as well and got right into it each week. Plus, it was my time to work on my goal to become an adaptive sailor. The core regular crew all knew each other well, but they welcomed me into the team and very soon they each became an important influence to me. Speedy, Bridget, James, and of course, David and Deb. Love you guys so much. And each week we'd have a number of SWD members who'd sporadically join us when they could. I was meeting so many great people and becoming more and more circulated in our SWD community and just making some great friends. It was wonderful. The SWD Hobart outreach campaign in February this year, well, once again, I honestly don't know how it happened and I don't know what I was thinking. 
because when the call went out that they needed volunteers to sign up for the campaign or it wouldn't be able to go ahead, I suddenly found myself answering the call and signing up on the calendar. I hadn't had a two week break in 14 years. I hadn't travelled on my own or lived on my own anywhere that wasn't my flat. Again, there I was doing something way out of character. <laughs> I absolutely loved the Hobart campaign. Sailing nearly every day for two weeks, meeting a group of other SWD volunteers that I didn't know and becoming a close-knit crew, working through a whole heap of challenges from daily life outside of my usual environment, and I loved my early mornings sitting up on the bow on my own, nice and quiet, looking at the reflection of Mount Wellington in the water. Just beautiful, just beautiful. So as the campaign came to a close, I found myself not wanting to go home and back to work. I was having too much fun, meeting too many awesome kids and adults, and seeing them love their sailing experience. I've promised myself that I'll be back there next year and I already have a bank account starting to save up towards that. And I told one young primary school girl that I hoped I would see her come out with me again on the boat. She was a wheelchair user too. Though once we were out on the Derwent and sailing, she decided to get out of her chair, slide along the deck and sit in front of the helm to steer. I was just so happy when I watched that. I told her about how I leave my chair behind on the dock and then slide around on the boat to do my job sailing the boat. And how that I race the boat as well and that it doesn't matter that my way of going about my work is different to my other crewmates, I still get the job done and that's all that matters. She was watching her classmates walk up and down the boat to sit up the front of the bow and she said that maybe next time she'd like to do a little bit more on the boat and slide her way up to the bow like they do and see why they're having so much fun up there. And also that she couldn't wait to get home and tell her brother and sister about how she steered a big racing yacht because they had done boating activities before and she couldn't go with them because it wasn't accessible. Our boat was accessible though. So this was her first time See, how can you want to go back to normal daily life and work after two weeks of magic experiences back to back like that all day every day? <laughs> Straight after returning I was back into my Winds of Change group. That was a great outcome. You should really watch my videos on those sales. It was just a great experience. Then I was off representing SWD at the Women Who Sail Australia conference. Uh, a few days later I was sailing in my first real race regatta, sailed Port Stephens. Massive learning curve for me, uh, both in terms of sailing and personal growth. Um, plus I met a number of awesome older SWD racing crew members. And by older, I don't mean like age old, <laughs> guys, don't, don't get me back next time. <laughs> um, <laughs> but these were guys I had previously read a lot about, so I felt like I was sailing with SWD celebrities. Uh, that long weekend of racing was fantastic. Then there was my first offshore sailing passage delivering the boat back from Port Stephens to Sydney, another massive high of self-achievement, again amongst some really great SWD sailors and now mates. Uh, there were fundraising regattas, receiving grants, bringing in a few new volunteers, learning maintenance work, a pretty wide range of things I've been up to. I even spent an evening at Kirribilli House for uh, supporters of SWD function. Uh, where I talk to so many business people about what I do and see with SWD that my neck was literally so sore from constantly looking up for hours, you know, being in a chair and crammed in a room with people, I would have to like look up at this to talk to someone really close to me. So yeah, such a sore neck. <laughs> And yes, I did meet our Prime Minister, yes, I thought he was a fascinating guy and we must have chatted all things boats and kayaks for nearly 10 minutes. And most recently the Winter Series racing and some training, mind blown, 
with what I learned and took away from those 10 weeks. Um, just my ability to get around the boat and do my job is just watching the videos back. I'm just moving so much better. I'm more confident, uh, learning lots of things. Yeah, just the most amazing experience. Again, I have videos on that. So um, if you haven't seen them, go watch them because they're pretty cool. I'm telling you now, there is much laughter and laughter all the time, especially amongst our crew buddies. Uh, we are definitely not politically correct with each other. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> so many moments uh, and so few we can actually share on camera. <laughs> Joking, <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> um, so there was that time David said, uh, look at Renee over there sitting down on the job, you know. Being a power and all, that's me sitting down. Um, or there was my first time on out on whatever, which was totally a dream come true and a whole other story. Um, but once we got the sails up and started going, David looks back to me and asks if I'm going okay at getting across because whatever is much more open uh, than kale. So I say yes, and he replies with a cheeky, that's good, don't hurt my boat. <laughs> or there was that time when Breddy slams us off a wave and showers everyone straight to the face with much spray. Um, Kirk yells out, I can't see. <laughs> Kirk is completely blind. <laughs> um, and what about when you ask a para for more backstay while we're really healed over? I have a video of that one. Check this out. I can't let go. Sorry. <laughs> oh, wait. No. So if I let go of the boat and go to start winching the back stay on, I'm going to go flying off because I have no leg muscles to hold me on to the boat. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you can see as the gust sort of subsides a little bit, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Start winching. <laughs> Aside from all that laughter and banter among us, I am truly blessed to now have this amazing group of mates. They teach, they challenge, they push, they pick me up. In the case of David, quite literally, to get me on and off whatever or you're hired. Even though I may occasionally make him resort to threatening to drop me into the water instead of onto the dock, he never has, of course. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> but um, honestly, sailing can be hard. Um, for me, it's physically challenging, um, it's painful, uh, fatigue is also uh, a thing that plagues me all the time. Um, it's a, been a big sacrifice uh, to, to do, um, but you know, the, the challenges, they are so tiny compared to uh, what I get out of it and what I've been able to give others. It's, it's a sacrifice just worth making. My family, friends and acquaintances have noticed positive changes within me over this past year. Looking back, wow, I have grown so much within myself personally. I also have this new and noticeable air of motivation, direction and purpose. I'm doing something meaningful. And for the first time in my entire life, I am not exaggerating, entire life. I have something of a work-life balance. No more burying myself in a constant work addiction to cope with my changed life. I think the past 12 months have been this indescribable experience because so much has changed and happened and a big chunk of it are things or feelings that I've never experienced before. I feel like I'm on a brand new road and I don't know where I'm going. But the opportunity to reinvent my life was offered to me just a few months after I was uh, devastated by some decisions and news from my medical team. Um, 
Yes, I feel like the work I've done for SWD over these past 12 months has been really valuable. But the funny thing is, I feel like I've received way more back. Because honestly, you probably have no idea what I've gone through, what I deal with every day, the pain of what I've lost, the demons I fight within. SWD is a family. We work together, we support each other, there is a lot of banter and laughing. We challenge each other. The person I am today is very different to the person I was 12 months ago. My life has been reignited. I have so many people to say thank you to. Scary thing is that that was just my first 12 months on a yacht working for SWD. Where will I be for SWD in 12 months from now? <laughs> or 12 years from now?